So now we are going to discuss how to go from the Fourier series to the Fourier integral. So let's rewrite the right hand side of Parseval's formula. So this is n going from minus infinity to plus infinity, and we have cn squared. But this is multiplied by 1. But 1 is essentially the interval, the size of the interval in n. So we can rewrite that as delta n. So let us now introduce a new variable, and let's call this variable k. And this is related to n in this manner. Then uh, delta k will be given by 2 pi l delta n. So in terms of k, my Parseval's formula becomes I'm still using n temporarily because k can be expressed in terms of n We can also introduce some new Fourier coefficients, which I'm going to call AL of K. And these are defined in this way. And uh, using the expression for CN that we know, we can write this as. But remember that in the exponential we had n before, but now we can replace that n and 2 pi and all that stuff by k. And so this is how we define this new Fourier coefficients a k, a l of k. And now what we do is that we take the limit in which l goes to infinity and k goes to zero. So this is, you know, if I take L to infinity, then of course K goes to zero. And uh, then in that limit, this ALK become AK. I'm, gonna, I'm going to call them AK. And AK is the limit where L goes to infinity of AL of K. And in that limit, my expression for the new Fourier coefficient becomes phi of x e to the power minus i k of x d of x. And the Fourier series, let me remind you what it was. This was, there was an infinite sum with cn to pi and x over l in that limit phi of x becomes 2 pi an integral from minus infinity to plus infinity the c of n is replaced by a of n and uh, this becomes a of k and the exponential becomes plus i kx and now the sum you know which was um, is going to become dk okay so in going from here to here there are a few steps where you actually introduce um, you know delta n and then turn that into a, a delta k so that when you take the limit you get a measure of d, dk over here okay you should try to do that so let's summarize. So what we have done is that we have taken the limit of the Fourier series where L went to infinity, the periodicity went to infinity, and K went to zero. And in that limit, you know, um, we get these expressions for phi and A. But notice that in this limit, you know, our function phi of x also becomes a function psi of x. 
<clears throat> which was the original function. Remember, the original function psi of x was only defined in the interval minus l by 2 to plus l by 2. But now that whole interval has taken over the real line. So this expression that we derived is now an expression for psi of x. So we can write that psi of x is given by a sum of exponentials with its k value, say the momentum value, to speak loosely, is given you know, uh, by this basis function, and these are the coefficients. And uh, these coefficients, a of k, are given by 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity. This is this example. And then we have psi of x e to the power minus <clears throat> kx. And then here it's going to be dx. So these are the beautiful Fourier transforms of each other. So they're called Fourier transforms. Um, And notice that in the Fourier transform, if there's a plus sign here, there's a minus sign here, okay? But it's a very beautiful and symmetric pair of expressions. So what we can do is now, we can now plug in the expression for A in, into the first equation, then we get a expression for psi of x in terms of itself, and that is given by psi of x is going to be 1 over 2 pi. And it's given by minus infinity to plus infinity, a double integral. Psi of x prime. x prime is an auxiliary uh, variable that we're going to integrate over. And so is k. All right. So this is the um, this is actually called the Fourier integral theorem. So this has a name called the Fourier integral theorem. So in terms of the integrals, in terms of this limit, Parseval's formula now becomes a lot more symmetric okay so we took this limit where we took L to go to infinity and K to go to infinity. But in this limit, the Fourier series goes to the Fourier um, integral, but this only works if the function psi of x satisfies certain conditions. So, uh, in other words, the function psi of x has to be nice. So this only works, the Fourier, in the representation of the function psi of x in terms of this integral only works if psi of x is 1. It's a non-singular function. So it means that it can't really blow up anywhere. It can have, sing it can have dis uh, discontinuities, that's fine, but it cannot blow up. Um, it has to be, the psi x has to be um, equal to its average, suitably defined, at every point. And lastly, the, the mod of psi integrated over the whole range has to be finite. This has to exist. So it's only when psi of x satisfies these 
condition that we can express it as a Fourier integral. So in the next section, we are going to discuss some examples of Fourier integrals.